Edwin. Okay, thank you uh, so much. And uh, as we begin our session, let us believe and pray. Dear loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, as we come together, Lord, for this wonderful uh, public lecture, we pray that, oh God, you will lead us, that King of Glory will give the speaker the uh, utterance that King of Glory is supposed to speak. Lord, we thank you, God, for the management of Wakanyata University. We thank you, God, for the management of Nuclear Power and Energy Agency. Lord, we thank you, God, for this country, Lord. As we continue, oh God, to implement the nuclear power program, Lord, we pray at all, God, may you lead us. And at the end of it, all glory, honor, and praise will be unto you. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. In the name of Jesus, we do pray with thanksgiving. And you all should have said, Amen. Okay. So we will go through this uh, program. Firstly, we'd like to thank our gracious hosts, uh, Kenyatta University. And uh, we've just had a visit with the Vice Chancellor in the last uh, few minutes. And I will uh, now welcome Dr. Rafael Nyenge, who is the Chairman of the Department of Physics, um, to come up and welcome us to Kenyatta University. This is the Confucius Institute, is it? Okay, but it's not our place of confusion. Confucius was a man of wisdom, and uh, I'm sure that's what we'll spew here today. Thank you. Our protocols observed. I think uh, we are short of time. I want to welcome you to the Department of Physics. We are hosted here in this uh, hall, named after a great uh, philosopher. And we are here to be converted to think uh, nuclear. And we are ready for that lecture. So in case we welcome you to to the Department of Physics, Kenyatta University. And we have plenty of students who are already converted. You will not do much work. And we are also excited to have with us the DVCs in charge of academic and research. We are also excited to have uh, experts from NUPEA who are supporting this uh, function. So without wasting so much time, the students also feel welcome. Members of staff who are with us feel welcome. And we will give you all our ears. We also, normally in Kenya, when you come here, we say Yakuna Matata means no problem. We don't fear nuclear as you've been meant to, to think. Those who are in physics, they understand what nuclear energy is. So you are with the right people, just a few who fear nuclear energy. So maybe when you go back, you can greet your people in Jumbo. Jumbo just means hello. At least when you leave Kenya, you have one word in Kiswahili. You cannot forget Jumbo. Yes, good. Thank you, sir. I can assure you he has a lot more words than uh, Jumbo, some of which I will not repeat. Um, so we now invite um, the Dean, Professor Michael Gisheru, to also come and uh, say a word. Uh, Kenyatta University Vice Chancellor, presented here by Professor uh, Caroline Thurman, who is also the DVC Research, Innovation and Outreach. Our key speaker uh, and the head of our Department of Nuclear Energy, who is also the Director General uh, in the International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, NUPEA, represented here by Chairman of the Board and other members of the board who are here, Deputy Vice Chancellors who are here, Professor Caroline Thorwa, Professor Sheku Anjohi, in charge of academics, other members of management who are here, and chairpersons of departments and executive deans of schools who are represented in this meeting. I'm aware that this meeting is also online, so I'm sure they must be somewhere following the proceedings. 
students, faculty members, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Yes, uh, as you have heard, my name is uh, Professor Michael Richello, Executive Dean, School of Pure and Applied Sciences, which is a host school for the activities of nuclear energy. Whatever is happening in this university, uh, a lot of work is being done in the School of Pure and Applied Sciences. And that's why, as the Dean, I feel we are honored as a university for uh, uh, Mr. Mikel to find the time out of the busy, busy program they have been having with New Pier to come and address us and talk to us about nuclear energy. So we are very, very excited. I also want to thank New Pier because they have created this time. We've been collaborating with New Pier uh, in the nuclear energy activities in this university, and I really, really want to appreciate the DG the board, the chairman of the board, for creating time to bring this very, very important digging toilet, Kenyatta University, to talk to us about nuclear energy. Uh, Deputy uh, Director General, let me assure you, uh, this university has been fully, fully participating in the activities that you've been supporting in this university, and we are very, very happy, we feel honored because we know there are many, many other institutions, many universities, but through NUPIA, and you chose to work with Kenyatta University. And I just want to assure you, we will not let you down. We are putting the activities very, very nicely. The postgraduate program is moving on very well. I'm sure you must have heard of that. Our internet reactor lab is operational, and we are very, very happy because it's going a long way in helping us to realize the nuclear education, nuclear education in this region. And mine is really not to give a lecture here, is to invite the Deputy Vice Chancellor, who is supposed to welcome you here, uh, so that you can address to the students. So with those few remarks, let me allow, invite Deputy Vice Chancellor uh, for academics, Professor Washek Wanjohi, to give some remarks and then uh, invite uh, Professor Torua, who will then welcome you here to come and talk to the audience. Thank you. Welcome, Davis. Um, the Deputy Director General, Mr. Mikhail Chudavo, Chudakov, and colleagues in the interest of time, allow me to associate myself with the protocols that have been made by my previous speakers. I want to say there is a lot more we would say about this and the role that the academic division is playing in promotion of the application of nuclear science and technology. But I just want to say, take this very, very brief moment to just play my role, because I know we have many audience that are waiting online, you have been waiting and you're anxious. And I know you have lots and lots of questions and engagement you want to do, and so we want to allow that time. And so I want to take this opportunity to invite um, my colleague in management, uh, Professor, and a friend, Professor Karora in um, Thorua Rangat. Her position is acting Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of research, innovation, and outreach. But in this meeting, uh, she is going to be representing the head of this institution, the vice chancellor, the chief executive officer, Professor Paul K. Wainaina. So please, Professor, come and make the remarks on behalf of our team. Thank you very much. Deputy Director, General Nuclear Power and Energy Agency, IAEA, Mr. Mikhail. Shudakov, Director, Technical Cooperation, Division for Africa, Nuclear Power and Energy, Professor Abrul Razak, Chairman, Nuclear Power and Energy Agency Board, Mr. Ezra Odiambo, DGCEO, Nuclear Power and Energy Agency, Mr. Webu Yabo, 
Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Washeke, Dean, uh, School of Pure and Applied Sciences, Professor Gisheru, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Kenyatta University is one of the leading public universities in Kenya with over 40 years of service to the education sector in the country. The university has the following divisions, academics, administration and finance, research, innovation, and outreach. Currently, the university has nine schools in the academic division. They include the School of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, the School of Business, Economics and Tourism, School of Education, School of Engineering and Architecture, School of Health Sciences, School of Law, Arts and Social Sciences, School of Pure and Applied Sciences, Graduate School, Digital School of Virtual and Open Learning. Kenya is a member state of the International Atomic Energy Agency. The country has benefited through cooperation programs with the IAEA in the field of nuclear science and technology. I understand that IAEA is carrying out an integrated nuclear infrastructure review mission for Kenya's National Nuclear Research Reactor Program this week. Kenyatta University supports the national programs towards the safe and peaceful application of nuclear science and technology. We work closely with the key national organizations in the field of nuclear science and technology. These include the Kenya Nuclear Regulatory Authority, Nuclear Power and Energy Agency, National Commission for Science and Technology and Innovation, Kenya Bureau of Standards. We have developed curricula for training in nuclear science and technology, which have been developed following guidelines and best practices from the IAEA. We seek your continued support in developing our training programs in nuclear engineering. Kenyatta University coordinates the IAEA Internet Reactor Laboratory Project in the country. The host reactor is in the Center for Nuclear Energy Science and Technology in Morocco. Eight local universities are going to participate in this important training in nuclear reactor physics and engineering. This training will contribute to our human capacity building for national nuclear power programs and research reactor. I am pleased to report that the postgraduate educational course on, in radiation protection and safety of sources is going on well at the university. A total of 20 participants from 15 African member states are participating in this six months program that commenced in October 2023. The university is therefore honored to host this national public lecture on nuclear science and technology. This lecture will greatly enhance our awareness on nuclear science and technology at the national and regional levels. We sincerely thank the IAEA and the Nuclear Power and Energy Agency for selecting Kenyatta University to host this important public lecture. On behalf of the university management, I wish you all a successful event and assure you of our highest consideration. Thank you. Uh, let, let's give a, a more farmer round of applause, a nuclear one. Uh, with energy and drive. Huh? So now I'll call upon the chairman of the Nuclear Power and Energy Agency, um, Mr. Ezra Diambo. Uh, to come to the podium, just make a few remarks and maybe notify the team that he's come with from Nepal. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon once more. Yeah, I should cheer up. This is a very special occasion because we have a very important guest from the International Energy Agency who will talk about nuclear matters. But before we get there, 
let me tell you one or two things about ourselves and the UPA. Me, my name is Ezra Odiambo. I'm the chairman of the Nuclear Power and Energy Agency. I'm an electrical engineer specializing in telecommunications, computer systems, and software engineering. Now, NUPEA is a government agency with the mandate of implementing the nuclear power program in Kenya. We expect to have an operational nuclear power plant sometimes in 2034. We also have the mandate of implementing the nuclear research reactor and we expect to be operational by the year 2030. We also coordinate, conduct research in the energy and the petroleum sector in Kenya. On to that, we also act as a liaison office between the International Energy Agency and Kenya, because the International Energy Agency has got very many support programs to a number of countries who are member states of the agency. And this include matters in hydrology, agriculture, health, material testing, cancer diagnosis and treatment, among others. So that is new pair. And with me, I've got one board member here. I understand that you appreciate him, Mr. Koteng. There was mention of an international program that is currently ongoing and is one of the lecturers in that training that is ongoing. I also have with me Mr. Chesire, he's an engineer. He runs the National Liaison Office that deals with between IAE and the various benefiting institutions in Kenya. I hope that this will be a great opportunity for you to listen to the director from the International Atomic Agency, and I hope that it will be a fruitful engagement. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. And um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know you've been anticipating this, and uh, you must have your questions because he wants your questions, he wants your views and perspectives. He wants to engage, um, at least that's what he told me. And uh, so feel free, uh, every opinion is valid. Um, and uh, I'll just say something about this gentleman. Uh, Mikhail Shudakov is, um, a uh, born, bred, cut and dried uh, nuclear man. Uh, he understands all aspects of the technology. He has uh, been there, seen it. He has worked in uh, nuclear facilities um, in many parts of the world. And he is actively involved in supporting newcomer countries in various continents that are now embarking. And he can give you case studies as far as uh, Turkey, as uh, Bangladesh and others. And of course, um, we all want Kenya to be part of that resume, don't we? Don't we? Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, I can see you. Uh, but we, 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 will, we, will, we will revisit after he has been able to speak. So join me in uh, welcoming to the podium Mikhail Chudakov, Deputy Director, IA and uh, the head of the Department of Nuclear Energy um, at the agency. And uh, let's do it, uh, let's give him a five factorial to do. So we start, we st no, 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 uh, 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 uh. five factorial, we start with one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, one. Okay, let's go. Karibu. Yeah, I think that, thank you very much that uh, your solemn introduction of me and the applause that I can already say thank you and leave that. Uh, I'm not sure, but I took this because I wanted to, to walk around what I'm usually doing. Uh, do we have some slides, Mike? Is it possible to switch and I can change it or not? You could use this. 
Ok. But how to change it? How to change it? Will be. No, necessary to, to take out of the uh, words. Uh, I don't know. That. I don't need these words. You also. Just the slides on the full screen. Don't know how to do it. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, excellent. Excellent. So just... Uh, what push? Here. Oh. Uh, dear students, dear professors, uh, dear the uh, top level management of uh, Kenyatta University, uh, uh, thanks for inviting me and uh, I always uh, use opportunity to make presentation about the nuclear power in the universities in the world. I'm doing it uh, in uh, almost all countries that I visited. As already was mentioned, I visited maybe uh, Two thirds of the uh, nuclear power plant sites in uh, the, the world, and all my life, as already mentioned, that I was uh, connected to this nuclear power. So I know what I'm uh, telling about. And uh, I was graduated from Moscow Physical Engineering Institute uh, and uh, uh, worked on construction and operation big reactors, uh, water water reactors. We uh, are 1,000. Uh, at Kalini nuclear power plant, uh, pressurized water reactors, and uh, go through all positions, uh, starting the field operator, then was a reactor operator, operate myself with big reactor, get criticality, get the power, uh, I organize reactor scram if it's necessary, shut down, uh, uh, participated in maintenance of the reactor. And uh, also just uh, I worked as the plant manager, director of nuclear power plant and on different position of Rosener Gartam, including the deputy director general of the uh, Rosener Gartam. This is a company who's, uh, who operate all uh, nuclear uh, peaceful fleet in, in Russia, 33 reactors on 10 sites, 10 sites. And here in IAA are already eight years on the position of Deputy Director General and uh, the head of the Department of uh, Nuclear Energy. So just uh, I shortly uh, describe what is IAEA, what they are doing and uh, what we are doing in IAEA and uh, the nuclear energy then and why we need nuclear energy and uh, moreover why we cannot be without nuclear energy. We don't have the, any, any option. So energy was... Uh, Created in 1957, so 66 years ago, and uh, created is uh, mainly, of course, as uh, for non-proliferation. Because by those time, you know that already five big countries, big five, as as in Africa, big five, that uh, had nuclear power, nuclear bombs. This is uh, USA, uh, Russia, UK, France, uh, and China. And uh, uh, in order to uh, stop this proliferation, it was created uh, agency, but the one of the also second part, main part, it was that to give the pluses uh, of nuclear power to the member states, to the whole uh, world, including that uh, nuclear application and uh, uh, radioactive uh, uh, radioisotopes for medical and uh, for science and also the nuclear power. The nuclear power is exactly peaceful nuclear power. And you know that in 1954 was the uh, first commercial nuclear reactors uh, created in, in Russia, Obninsk, in Obninsk. And you can ask uh, just uh, to continue this idea that what the, why uh, agency not fulfill the obligation about the non-proliferation, but because we know that since then that uh, India has nuclear power, Pakistan has nuclear power, uh, Israel has nuclear power. It's not confirmed, but uh, it's uh, not denied also. Everybody knows. And uh, that uh, I, nuclear bomb, I mean, nuclear bomb, nuclear military power. And uh, uh, also that uh, Northern Korea has, uh, has bomb. Uh, nobody knows how powerful their bomb, but that they have. Uh, 
agency uh, timely reported it uh, to the uh, safety council of that uh, inter inter uh, to, to, to the united nations and this is already uh, we we are finding it we are reporting and uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, member states of the United Nations should decide how to stop and what to do with these countries. And uh, unfortunately, this issue not solved up to now. And uh, in the future, unfortunately, uh, if uh, it goes like this, we have a risk to get several more countries uh, having the nuclear bomb. But it's nothing to do with the peaceful use of the nuclear power. But um, our department, Department of Nuclear Energy, is uh, the main department that, uh, and uh, he is, uh, we have that uh, three division, Division of Nuclear Power, Division of Nuclear Fuel Cycle, and Waste Technology, and Division of Planning, Information, and Knowledge Management. I shortly describe. So we are working with peaceful nuclear, with the nuclear power that, uh, uh, nuclear power is starting from mining, from uh, uranium mining, and uh, for continue with uh, preparation of the fuel assemblies, uh, fuel for different reactors, and operation, construction reactors, operation reactors, uh, uh, that uh, electricity generation, uh, and uh, spent fuel, what to do with spent fuel, and uh, what to do with uh, then, and how to decommission. And also, we we're working with uh, uh, stakeholder involvement. I'll tell you about this uh, a little bit later. And the uh, other uh, information systems that why, when I mean that we are working and doing it, uh, we are, of course, that uh, uh, official workers, we are clerk, that, uh, and uh, we are uh, helping to our member states to solve the questions, to prepare, to conduct the inter international conferences, uh, meetings, uh, get education on uh, the topic uh, uh, on the nuclear power, and uh, just uh, uh, helping countries to create necessary infrastructure and uh, uh, education, uh, human resource development, and so on and so on, a lot of things. So uh, why we need the nuclear power? Because uh, the population is growing. The population is growing, you know, this year we already reached uh, 8 billion, and uh, by 2050 we will get 10 billion. And population mainly, more than 50% will be living in the big cities, the big cities. And uh, uh, still now a lot of the population in the world uh, don't have the access to the electricity, especially in Africa, if you look on the map from the satellite, and you will see that the, the dark Africa. And uh, more than 600 uh, million people in Africa don't have the access uh, to the electricity. And electricity consumption is the uh, equivalent of the level of life, actually. Unfortunately, our projection showed by 2050, in spite of the growing uh, that, uh, production of electricity and heat that uh, on uh, capita in Africa, more or less the same amount. And this is not fair, because it means that the level of life in many countries of Africa can stay like it's not now. Uh, that, uh, uh, of course, that uh, Kenya is one of the best countries that uh, could be developed in Africa. But we have a lot of countries where the even population grow in uh, Dublin for 20 years. This is uh, Niger, Nigeria, you know yourself. That and of course they need the nuclear, uh, they need the power. And uh, that's, uh, at the same time, they need that, uh, the clean, green power. And of uh, course uh, we are talking about the climate change and carbon dioxide emission. And other sources of energy, unfortunately, cannot solve this issue. Also, just uh, if we're talking about the GNG emission, carbon dioxide emission, you can see here that the nuclear, during the whole life cycle, uh, is the one of the best. It's uh, also just uh, compatible with the wind. With the wind, other sources of energy is uh, produced much more uh, GNG, carbon dioxide emission. That uh, especially that uh, uh, coal, gas, uh, that uh, oil 
And here, even uh, with uh, carbon capture and storage, I will tell you about this a little bit later. And without carbon capture and storage, this is much more. That um, why why nuclear? Why nuclear? That nuclear is a green green source of energy. And even now, uh, that working 412 uh, nuclear power plant in the world. Uh, making a heroic uh, process of saving carbon dioxide emission. That uh, nuclear saves uh, two gigaton carbon dioxide emission per year. If to compare it, uh, explain it in, uh, in other figures, that's like uh, get out of the road 400 million cars, petrol cars or diesel cars, 400 million a year. If the uh, nuclear wouldn't work, this is other sources of energies who produce that uh, carbon dioxide would work instead of, and we will get this uh, two uh, gigaton carbon dioxide emission. Even now, even now that uh, nuclear is uh, produce uh, one twenty five percent, one fourth uh, clean green energy. Uh, actually, during operation, nuclear not produce at all that carbon dioxide emission. And here amount, when you construct the diesel generators working and when you decommission and destroy the con concrete and uh, cut in metal that also, that's for whole, whole life. And what is important, the nuclear power, nuclear power is uh, that uh, capacity factor is uh, one of the highest. You know that, uh, what is it capacity? There, there is installed capacity. That's uh, declared how it uh, should produce, and reality how it's produced, and uh, so capacity factor for nuclear is one of the highest, uh, 93 for the uh, new reactors and uh, 86 for the old reactors, but totally more than 90, 90 percent. It means that it works always 24/7, in spite of the weather, in spite of the wind or sun. As you look at the wind and solar, it's a 24% solar. Wind is uh, a little bit more than 30. The wind exists or not exists, solar exists or not exists. And uh, uh, hydropower a little bit more, uh, coal and natural gas uh, a little bit more, but we are talking that we need by 2050 that avoided that 70, almost 70% that carbon sources of energy. That's we shouldn't count. Somebody should replace this 70%. And this is the role of green, of course, sources of power and the nuclear. Why nuclear is so important? Because without nuclear, green, nuclear, no one green, so-called green source of power cannot do it, cannot do it alone and or together. If we are talking about the hydro station, they're good, good. Uh, and uh, but on big rivers everywhere where it's possible construct they're more or less constructed and many countries refuse to, to construct new and create dams and flood in a great territory of course you can create cascade and but also this means that you create a lot of dams and increase the uh, kilowatt hours investment in the water uh, even the biggest uh, Hydro station in the world, like that three gorgeous dam in uh, China. This is 22 gigawatts. It's a huge. Uh, uh, one short one, uh, even after 50 percent, now not working because they don't ha have enough water because the climate changes and upper turbines left without uh, uh, water. The same with the. Uh, uh, Brazil second second or 12 or 14 gigawatt that. Also, that it depends from the year. One year there is water, another year no water at all. That and they work on uh, one sort of their power. And uh, Brazilian talent, we don't need uh, hydro station anymore because you flooded the uh, very unique territory of Amazonia. And up to now, many years ago, up to now that there is a demonstration of local Indians in uh, the uh, Brasilia, the capital. That's uh, the, because we moved move a lot of population. By the way, the most movement of population were in the world, up to the 80 millions, was uh, under construction of hydro station. Not after the Chernobyl accident or Fukushima accident. 
after construction of hydro station. And the most dangerous uh, event in energy was after the, the uh, event on the hydro station. So that uh, you look on Google, you will find an 80 with something, 86 or something, that, that the dam in uh, China, when it was broken, uh, brought uh, more than 20,000 people here. More than 20,000. So you're moving millions of people from the territory. You flood in unique territory that and if it breaks, you have a, a lot of that uh, kill people, and uh, nobody worrying about it. The people worrying about the nuclear. What nuclear? Let's uh, uh, look at Fukushima. Nobody died from radiation. Two people was drawn. On uh, Chernobyl, 28 people from uh, shift was died, and uh, totally, officially, 54. This is millions. This is exaggeration. Never happened. Never happened. Of course, there is contamination of territory. And uh, it can be cleaned, in my opinion, that much quicker than it's done. Because there included uh, some political reason. Because the countries or the uh, company who is doing it, just making maybe not correct from point of view IA statement, getting money by years and years for this cleaning. Actually, it could be done much quicker and much faster. And there is a lot of judgment for this and uh, because the company who is doing it can do successfully that not allow it to work and not get in there because the source of money don't want to share this. Uh, so just uh, you see that uh, 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 as already we uh, touched Chernobyl and Fukushima I'll tell that both of this event is uh, uh, handmade, man-made, man-made. And the new, of course, uh, reactors is uh, uh, already an old one, also modernized and new already. If the same conditions can can appear, so that never happened. The re reactivity uh, that uh, event as uh, Chernobyl uh, was excluded on all design and new and all that never happened. This positive reactivity and prompt prompt uh, uh, that uh, criti criticality. And uh, uh, uncontrolled prompt criticality. And uh, uh, for the residual heat removal event is uh, on uh, Fukushima also, just after Fukushima, that a new design, an old design, additional uh, mobile uh, generators, uh, electrical generators, uh, water pumping they created, and uh, also created the tanks that can under the gravity uh, cool down the uh, fuel without any operator three days so just uh, it's never happened it's a new design of course it's a brings that increasing the price for the construction and kilowatt hours it's 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 done uh, for the safety but the price of the kilowatt hours for the uh, nuclear power is one of the cheapest if you take for the whole life cycle because new design constructed for 60 years and can be a prolonged operation plus 30 years for century can work with predictable price. And why many countries now starting talking about the nuclear power? Because the price for electricity started jumping with uh, political war and other crises. We have, by the way, that uh, yesterday I read more than 50 war conflict now in the world. It's never happened before. Uh, uh, since the Second World War, more than 50, unfortunately. Of course, the prices uh, will be jumping because the cost of kilowatt hours in the carbon station is uh, consists 70% on the fuel, on the gas, oil, that uh, carbon. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. in uh, nuclear power plant, 7% only, 7% uh, uranium cost in the final kilowatt hours. So if you increase twice, that's what happened. You twice or several times get the increase on the carbon sources of energy. If even twice on uranium, but it's not expected because it's enough uranium. So that you not notice, you increase only on 7%. That's why for economy, for the country, for the uh, people, it's necessary to know the real price in order to, to create the industry and uh, get the business and not jumping it uh, every year. And uh, 
nuclear creates predictable price for the century. That uh, compare with our friends, wind and solar, wind and solar. First of all, first of all, that wind and solar needs a huge territory, great territory. If nuclear power plant is compact source of energy and uh, can get one unit, 1,000 megawatt uh, or one gigawatt, that is the same, uh, three square kilometers, the same amount of the need, 400 square kilometers. And uh, wind also just depends. If there is wind, small winds, they're not working. Big winds, they're also not working. They're also stopping. And also one unit is limited. Because the biggest now, I think, is 7.5 megawatt. And uh, this is already blade diameter 106, 156 to be. Are you going, and 100, 200, 156 the diameter of blades. Are you going to put in on one kilometer and create a uh, uh, spoil oil landscape, for example? Moreover, that, uh, the same for the uh, solar. Solar should uh, take, they take in also a great territory. What it means? You mean that collect all this energy, and in reality, you invest a lot in the grid, because you should collect from the small units all energy. And moreover, both of them, produce direct current, DC. So you need batteries for them that nobody counted. When they tell about the, us how good is solar and wind, our friend, I don't want to criticize them too much, they never mentioned that the grids should be increased three times and never mentioned about the batteries, that you need to invest uh, in batteries. And uh, then just also just, uh, you should uh, get the energy back in the alternative current. A lot of equipment with, by the way, rare materials, with lithium, that is limited in the world. Uranium is a lot, but uh, rare materials limited units for the battery. And nobody never calculate the price of decommissioning and what they will do with these panels, or which takes uh, uh, a lot of square kilometers in the world. In the world. One more, I'll tell you that uh, there is a very nice uh, index, energy return to energy investment. So how much time you get back energy which you spend for construction, for concrete, for construction source of energy, for the equipment, for the energy, for steam generator, for everything during the, their life. In nuclear power, it's the biggest, 75 times you get back, 75 times. Because of the lifetime is the 60 years. Because of lifetime is 60 years and because the capacity factor is high, more than 90%. So it's working 24 seven, always. Don't need the uh, wind, don't need the uh, sun, and most important, don't not burn in the uh, oxygen. Not burn in the oxygen. Listen, one uh, scientist telling that the big problem in ahead will be uh, even not with uh, sources of energy and carbon dioxide emission, but because the uh, amount of oxygen is getting down because we are cutting forests and we are burning it using uh, uh, carbon sources of energy and uh, uh, automobile and others. So nuclear power can work uh, because they don't need oxygen everywhere on the moon, on the space, on the uh, Mars, and it will be working there, for sure. So, hydroboral is okay, that looks solar PV, four times. But, if you include batteries, but they're working only with batteries, they need batteries. 1.6, 1.6. Almost what you invested, you receive. When the green supporters of uh, solar, telling us that uh, they will put a polar, uh, solar panel somewhere in the equator where a lot of sun, in Kenya, I don't know where, near the equator. Produce the electricity. From electricity, produce hydrogen. Bring hydrogen to the northern territory, to the Norway, where there is no uh, much sun 
and then uh, from this hydrogen produce electricity. Congratulations. You'll be in, in minus. You are cheating future generation. You are getting energy less than you invested. And nobody telling about this. Because uh, mainly this uh, honorable green people, green parties like it in Germany, they are not engineers and not technical persons. They don't understand the things. They are thinking that the electricity goes uh, through the plug and socket and not thinking what is behind. And by the way, let's take Germany. Germany invested uh, in wind and solar and closed nuclear power plants. They are now just, they, of course, that great increased power of carbon sources because they closed nuclear power plants. And uh, more than 50% they have on solar and wind. And what, what's happened? They uh, didn't reach no one goal that uh, their carbon dioxide emission, one of the highest in Europe, is uh, more than 400 gram equivalent per kilowatt hours. By, by the way, you have a good one. You have 40, 10 times less, 40, 48 gram equivalent because you have hydro and thermal and uh, that the good sources of energy. And the price on electricity increased for the people, for the population. And they're asking, how it's happened? You promised the cheapest way. Because they, when they promised, they never calculated the price of the modernization of the grid, dispatchers, and uh, also just uh, the price of the uh, uh, batteries. And uh, because uh, they cannot, cannot, cannot uh, uh, hold the frequency uh, uh, as, uh, as it should be. And by the way, producing the direct current, they don't have reactivity power. It means that you cannot transfer it on the big distance. You should put it somewhere close when you can use it. And the support of this uh, panel, uh, it's, uh, uh, they just don't know about it. Or no, or hiding it. That I am not against, understand me correctly. I am not against when it's necessary to supply the farm on the roof, uh, your houses, but it is not the source of energy we expect to melt the steel on the steel factories and the uh, uh, go, go speed, speed uh, train, electrical, and uh, other things. It's not, not the sources of energy. They can work together, of course. Somebody should, should be responsible for the frequency in the grid. And here, if you are not called to call, call in, about, about the carbon dioxide source, source of energy as a gas, or it, it can be only nuclear. So in reality, in reality, uh, a nuclear, green, clean source of energy, and if you are serious about the uh, uh, growing population and the, the, to increase the amount of uh, green nuclear, and uh, serious about the climate change, for the future, we need, we need, of course, nuclear. Now, what we have now, 412 nuclear power reactors in 31 countries. This is about 370 installed capacity and only 10% world's electricity in the world. So we are making, where's now projection? Projection uh, up to the 50. Every year we are making this uh, IA projection. This 890 gigawatt electrical, and also about only 10%. It's not saving the world. Actually, we should have that uh, uh, more than 20%, 40%, 35%, 60%. Not 60 is never be, will be like this. Uh, together, working with other, in order to, to uh, get good uh, control of the frequency in the grid and the uh, head have uh, stability in the grid and uh, a sustainable source of energy. That's unfortunately uh, even our projection small. But even this one we are not doing. We are not doing. We are talking about nuclear. We would like nuclear, and uh, but uh, more talking and talking and talking. So you uh, see that this is uh, amount uh, 2.5 more than we have now installed capacity, uh, but uh, taking into account the uh, withdrawal from operation, old st station, you, 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 you need to construct for 30 years. 
less than for 30 years already. 600 gigawatt. So you should put in operation 20 uh, unit, 1,000 megawatt every year. Are we doing it? No, no. Four, five, six, and the same amount, three, four, five, withdraw from operation, shut down for the commission. So just we already, because of the, uh, a lot of people have uh, uh, not believe in the nuclear of the future. We are already losing the battle for the, our good future. Uh, now that uh, this I showed, this I showed, well, I, I get to another, another direction. Sorry. Sorry. This is, uh, by the way, this is, you see the Director General Grossi, uh, and uh, yes, and uh, uh, Director Najat Mukhtar, my colleague and uh, Director of NA Nuclear Application uh, on the DISCOP 28. VDG, almost like me, maybe not so, but was passionate uh, supporting the nuclear power for the future. Because he knows that without nuclear future, we don't have the future. We don't have a good future. And uh, here's uh, what in reality we have. France, you see that almost was 70% now less. Uh, Slovakia and Norway, that, uh, who said that uh, production of electricity is uh, more than 50%. And the France is one of the cleanest uh, air in the world. They have even less than you, that uh, the 25, 30 gram equivalent per kilowatt hours. And uh, nearby Germany have 10 times more, 400, because they decided no. We close nuclear and we construct that uh, solar and wind. Congratulations to Germany. So 58 under construction now, and 30 in 30 uh, newcomer countries, which creating most of them creating that infrastructure. And we are helping to create infrastructure. Why do we need infrastructure? Infrastructure because of course it's a nuclear power, it's a serious source of energy almost for century. And uh, there should be commitment for this century. It shouldn't work. One government, government, government tell that it's okay. I'm support in four years. Another tell no, I'm not support. Shut down, because you have already that the construction, and you should work. You should work. Continue work with uh, uh, created uh, uh, reductive uh, fuel and uh, other consequences. And uh, of course, uh, the infrastructure. Uh, necessary to have. And we creating this infrastructure, helping to our member states create necessary infrastructure. And uh, uh, also Kenya uh, came through the uh, first uh, phase, phase one uh, infrastructure. Infrastructure consists on 19 uh, areas of activities uh, uh, showing that, of course, you should have a regulatory body. Some objectives, some scaling and depends on the country. You should have that uh, good grids. If you drop and shut down the, your unit, you should reserve, make standby, who will be replaced it and uh, working uh, when it's uh, shut down. You should have that uh, prepared you students, technical uh, university uh, graduate who could operate because it's a uh, very uh, technological uh, equipment, uh, and uh, also education, grids, uh, legislation, because there is a, a lot of uh, legislation that, that uh, law you need to, to take, international law, and so on. What to do with the waste fuel and uh, spent fuel, and so on. That, that, that's a needs in infrastructure. And uh, Kenya is creating and constructing this infrastructure, and we commend it. And also, just if you're talking about the research reactor, that Kenya is uh, now conducting the near mission infrastructure uh, review for research reactor. They, of course, overlapping with the, the big infrastructure, but there is uh, some of the specific features and some scale in that. And the uh, research reactor already uh, was told here that why we need We need it, uh, first of all, that uh, for education for uh, human resource development from my point of view uh, for the uh, future operation of the big nuclear fleet nuclear power and also of course uh, for the production of radioisotopes uh, for the 
medicine, uh, medical, to, to, to cope with cancer, you know, that, and uh, also for the industrial purposes uh, on the metallurgical plant and in many construction plant and uh, you need the uh, radioactive sources. And other, other things. So we conducted this uh, 36 missions in 25 member states, country. And uh, this is a, uh, edit me slide, you said, about the Kenya. Technical cooperation projects we participate in in several. Uh, Internet reactor laboratories that I'm going to see after my lectures. That, uh, uh, thanks for joining to Morocco, to the host uh, uh, country who has research reactor. It helps you, you know, probably, that to see a real uh, uh, research reactor and participate uh, to get in criticality and on some experiments uh, with neutron flux, not having research reactor. When you get your research reactor, maybe you'll be the hosting country for Internet Reactor Laboratory for this uh, eastern area of Africa. Uh, coordinating research projects, uh, Kenya participated also activity because uh, uh, good level of uh, uh, research and development and science, scientific, that uh, when them on one issue, some scientific organization uh, uh, working together and uh, suggest their uh, output and uh, how to cope and what to do in this issue. This is what coordinates and research project. And uh, Kenya is active participation. And uh, as I mentioned, three peer review conducted uh, in uh, uh, 2015 for the uh, follow for the Indian mission phase one and uh, 21 uh, recently for follow up just to see how it's implemented and what done. And we, of course, develop together integrated work plan, what to do, where to go. The same will be done for the research reactors activities. So we are working also in the areas of the generation four reactors, uh, three plus. Three plus, it's after Fukushima uh, modernized the old type of reactors. And the fast reactors, uh, SMR, small modular reactors. Why is there, we are now a lot of talking about SMR? Because um, they have uh, small modular reactors. They uh, not, uh, don't need the infront investment uh, in money so big like the big reactors. That's why more attractive even for the private company to get to input their money. Uh, unfortunately, that now for, to construct big power reactors, you need 80% investment in front investment. This is a safety ticket. That, uh, uh, and, uh, then operation is very cheap and uh, that's all this money for the 60 years of operation create the kilowatt hours the cheapest than uh, comparable with hydro station and uh, 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 small modular reactors get uh, smaller investment and uh, also just can uh, time of construction much uh, much much quicker and uh, can be quicker created uh, the uh, in the areas of uh, not developed grids, isolated areas, islands, northern territories uh, on the shelf to for production of extraction of oil. But uh, yeah, I, I, I forgot. I told you that we don't need oil by 2050. We don't put the SMR. And uh, so on. So just, uh, but uh, of course, SMR kilowatt hours will be more expensive, at least for the first for the first SMRs, when you create many of them, maybe it will be comparable with the big power. And uh, for example, that also just uh, Kenya. Kenya has uh, three gigawatt uh, grid. That uh, means that uh, it's problematic for you to put uh, 1,000 uh, megawatt, one gigawatt big unit. That, uh, because if you shut down it, you destroy all grid. And uh, it's recommended that it will be no, mo not more than 20% of the grid. So you good for the small modular reactors. And we call small up to the 300 megawatt electrical. And a it designs in the world now. 
uh, in in uh, 19 countries, but in reality, in the medicine, congratulations. Other countries, uh, uh, as is still working on it, uh, or don't have it. They have it only in design, not uh, not on the metal. Uh, fast reactors. Fast reactors, it's uh, working on the uh, fast neutrons, uh, and the, the normal reactor on the thermal uh, uh, neutron. This is on fast neutron. Why is they uh, good? They are good for the two reasons. Uh, first of all, that fast reactors create future fuel that only fast reactor create from uh, plutonium to 38 uh, from uranium to 38 plutonium to 39 in amount more than burning thermal power reactors also also create but they are burning during the process of uh, uh, reaction and so he create fuels of fuel like the bird phoenix and also fast reactors uh, can burn out, uh, uh, transmutate the so-called minor actinides or actinides, I don't know how in English correctly, actinides, which is uh, most dangerous and the uh, most radioactive toxic uh, uh, what left after the, uh, uh, the split in uranium that, uh, that uh, uh, which for the million years, on, only 1.1% in the fuel and the uh, spent fuel, but uh, this is what create the real issue for the spent fuel. Fast reactors can eliminate it and to bring the to the natural radi radioactivity to the equality. The same radioactivity as you take uranium uh, from the ground from the earth, you can three four hundred years and it's already good. And uh, also just. Uh, only that nuclear power, if we're talking about the green sources of energy, not uh, solar, not wind, uh, can produce simultaneously electricity and heat. Only uh, nuclear reactors can produce simultaneously energy, uh, electricity, and heat. Uh, and that uh, heat for the heating territory, for the industry heat, for the production of um, hydrogen in the future, and that's why that uh, we call it non-electric application for desalination, for desalination. And you know that uh, uh, we just a month ago conducted a completed review for the Jordan for the desalination by uh, small modular reactors. And we are talking and asking why you need the uh, reactors if you have a lot of sun and desert. He said that first of all, it takes a great territory. The second, we have a lot of uh, dust, sand, storms, and uh, uh, for cleaning it, we need water, but we don't need, don't have water. That's the problem. So they don't need uh, solar, in spite of a lot of sun and desert. They need nuclear power, Jordan. So just, um, uh, I just uh, start, start, start quickly complete because I, I, I can talk by hours if you not stop me that uh, uh, and uh, sorry for this uh, uh, I, we create a, a platform for SMR and the applications and just unite all activities in the agency and international and uh, if you apply uh, and as Jordan and ask us uh, please calculate for us create team that and uh, international calculate the applicability of SMR in our country and economy also. We, will do it. we are doing it for the several countries already through the SMR platform, this inter, inter departmental uh, platform. And uh, I am chairing it. So, just the research reactor, we are already we are talking about this uh, red waste management. Let's, let's touch a little bit that uh, everybody uh, afraid uh, spent fuel. But for 70 years, it was uh, created uh, 450,000 uh, uh, tons, uh, thousand tons uh, in heavy metal. So if you are not calculate the construction uh, metal and uh, uh, for the fuel assemblies. Now it's uh, around 280 because most is uh, uh, half of them reprocessed. Uh, 480 and uh, 280 now that 
uh, and uh, uh, if you uh, it's not so 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 uh, much amount if you put it you can put it on the one big stadium maybe it will be containers 40 meters high but in one football field for 70 years so I greatly exaggerated that all the spent fuel everywhere what we are going to do and what we are going uh, to do with this and uh, also there is a different approach uh, from uh, reprocessing uh, as using the fast tractors uh, when uh, the, you are talking about the closed cycle you can use all uh, closed cycles not only the uh, develop plutonium 239 but also use back all 238 uranium that not burned and uh, now you are not using it but using the fast reactors you can close cycles and it will be left only five percent less than five percent you will be on that minor actinides get back plutonium and get back uh, all uranium 238 so you don't need a lot of enrichment because uh, you'll be working on the same fuel several sites many sites and many years but this is uh, uh, a little bit what i didn't tell before so Spent fuel, spent fuel that Finland um, and the deep geological disposal that in Finland, uh, uh, Swedish, uh, France, uh, Russia sinking, Czech Republic is working on the how to uh, get it uh, under the ground and hold it. If you are not reprocessing, if reprocessing, it's another approach. And uh, also, Russia create now that uh, uh, small modular reactors. Uh, on the breast so-called breast 300 pro reef uh, uh, and uh, where uh, there is a plant for a processing together with fast reactors and you will use the same the same the same amount so you will need to add only five percent and they supposed to reprocess spent fuel from the uh, other thermal power uh, thermal reactors on thermal neutrons it, uh, will be working this is our future and uh, as I, when I, I told that i was director of nuclear power plant and when the uh, top level uh, parliamentarians came from moscow to me and they afraid nuclear power because of the fuel they thought you cannot get and uh, to them by the 100 kilometers and uh, i took them brought the, uh, that uh, central hall where it was uh, uh, handling this fresh fuel and with gloves please touch i touch you touch you can i can touch a few yes fresh fuel you can touch nothing happened with you and uh, moreover with the spent fuel when the dry storage dry storage you can touch concrete task and even feel the uh, warm and there something happened in their head the approach changes they afraid that they didn't want but the, 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 now they see that you easily can go close to the fresh fuel and even touch it and the uh, spent fuel of course behind the uh, container uh, behind the behind the cask but also can touch it's protected so it's not so dangerous as it uh, people thinking as as it exaggerated and not so big amount so taken i will start complete this is the commissioning you see that the, under the loan the commission and the nuclear power plant that's also in our programs and we are working uh, with facilities also just working uh, with creating energy planning and system uh, for the country that, that to, to, to can if you invite us we can calculate what share you can do on the nuclear power for the sustainable good reliable future in 2050 we have special software for this and uh, uh, capacity building and uh, we can, uh, conduct several school nuclear energy management school nuclear knowledge management and a lot of others we support databases uh, on uh, any more than 20 databases that on uh, uh, on, 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 on other please probably you use uh, to see that nuclear power we operate in our, our department international nuclear information system where there are more than four million records you can find the biggest nuclear uh, library in the world and uh, of course we are working with stakeholders and we'll be helping to your country also to, to work on this we have the special 
uh, good practices from the countries uh, who operate 70 percent of uh, electricity like france like finland and uh, uh, population support them and the government of course support them and uh, we have the special uh, conferences planning for 2025 on uh, stakeholder involvement and uh, this is very important because we see that there are some nuclear power plant never put in operation because they from very beginning don't have the reasonable support from the country as in philippines it's stopped already constructed nuclear power plant and uh, now they are thinking to resume it of course you you cannot resume it because it's too expensive and uh, this is old state 40 years better construct new one and when i visited but i like that like the minister of energy secretary kuzi department of energy philippines answer it to the mass media they said oh you're going to create nuclear power in our countries but uh, we have that uh, a lot of tsunamis and earthquakes he said listen my friends for 40 years uh, we stopped uh, and never load fuel on the our nuclear power plants uh, that we had thousand tsunamis and thousand earthquakes and go and look nothing happened with construction nothing happened it's constructed with uh, very good uh, uh, yes uh, 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 technologies that's don't you think he highlighted if we put in operation unit there 40 years ago it would be another country like maybe south uh, uh, Korea, he tells South Korea because there's the same type of reactor that they operate. Uh, and uh, this mass media didn't know what to answer him. And uh, you there was shouting 40 years ago that no nuclear, now no nuclear, loss of earthquake. Look on the construction, nothing happened. We had a lot of earthquake and a lot of tsunamis. So just, um, I deeply believe that, uh, that uh, without nuclear power, we cannot create sustainable and the good our future and uh, i will complete here because uh, you already died and since this is the crazy guy believe in nuclear and by the way that uh, is concerned the stakeholder when i was young reactor operator once i was uh, getting back the those time we were young i don't have the my personal car i was a reactor operator and uh, the kalinin npp between Moscow and St. Petersburg. And I was uh, in Moscow on some business trip going on the bus, uh, and the bus uh, nearby was a young lady, and she was a um, teacher. This high level of education, uh, she was uh, educated uh, uh, young, young uh, uh, girls and boys, pupils. And she uh, knew that, uh, found the time that uh, working on Kalini nuclear power plant, showing on the some uh, uh, nearby that adjacent uh, uh, forest which probably there was a forest fire it was burnt a little bit and uh, uh, she said uh, you see this is a uh, uh, influence of your nuclear power plant nuclear power plant was 400 kilometers from this place and uh, uh, i was surprised of course and uh, she said that you know everything but you are hiding this information because you had a good salary I think a little bit and answer it. So you believe that I know I was here. And uh, I'm hiding information uh, about the bad influence of nuclear power. Yes. But don't you think in this case, I would not uh, keep the, my family with two small children, with wife, and brought it to, to my uh, uh, mother, mother-in-law, and uh, stay myself to get in salary. She started thinking. Because... Uh, against nuclear power plant usually who is living far from nuclear power plant no one site among them more than 200 sites in the world you will find that they were protested against the nuclear power plant no one case protesting who is not don't understand what is it and uh, we need to always measure all pro and cons pro and cons pluses and minuses Nuclear power has more pluses than other sources of energy. And uh, when I usually tell them that 1 million 200 people uh, every year killed by automobile crash, why your green people not demonstrate again the car 
back to horses and demonstrate against the nuclear. Uh, and uh, uh, two days ago, we visited your uh, Serpentarium, this, uh, uh, that in the center of the, uh, where, where the uh, snacks, a lot of uh, poison snacks. And uh, the lady told us that more than 10,000 people killed in this part of Africa, not in, even in all Africa, every year. Every year, and uh, if we compare the what nuclear power plant, nobody was killed on Fukushima. Fifty-four people on Chernobyl, but a lot of talk about this. It's nuclear power looks like that for me, like white shark. White shark eating less than ten people in the year, and telling that occasionally it's uh, mistaking it uh, and uh, for the CCU and killed by millions. There is a protection, uh, protect white shark in, I don't know, maybe in Kenya also, in Australia and many countries. Because uh, finally they will kill all this. In the same position now, unfortunately, nuclear power. But we should take all pro and cons, positive and negative seeds. And uh, compare, uh, you will see that the nuclear power most safest as industrial safety, as other safety, most reliable, uh, source of energy and without this we cannot create sustainable good future. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a better round of applause. I, I told you this guy was Mr. Nuclear. Yeah, and uh, I'm uh, ready to answer questions if you have questions. Yes, so if if you could um, intercede, I think we have another mic. Hello, sir. I am Ahmed from Egypt. I am attending the postgraduate course of patient protection here in Kenya. Uh, thank you very much for these presentations. And uh, I uh, can summarize my question in three. <laughs> for these three questions, yeah. The first one about the, you mentioned in your presentation that the kilowatt hour for the nuclear is the cheapest, uh, according to the other source of energy. For the whole life, because the life is long or production. Yeah, my question about is the kilowatt hour price or cost is included that decommissioning, an emergency case, and waste management, all of this is included in the kilowatt hour price of the nuclear power plant? You know, that's uh, trying to include that, uh, but there is a, a small difference in uh, different countries that uh, in some are included and some not included that uh, uh, because there is a still, still difference on decommissioning. And decommission on don't depends on what level you are decommissioning. You can replace old unit by a new unit, and uh, that's all that. And uh, or you can decommission as on a picture on the green field. But uh, this is uh, a little bit not uh, sustainable. If already you use the site, they use the grid, they use the stuff uh, prepared and living here nearby. I construct a new nuclear power plant there, and your level of decommission will be ten times cheaper. And uh, so some more or less include, but there is a, uh, you are right. Okay, thank you. My second. But anyway, we are in the, the 60 years and uh, 90, more than 90% uh, that they're using capacity factor that uh, it's uh, always working. That's the main reason why it's, uh, if you calculate, will be the, the, the cheapest. Yeah, but I think in case of emergency situations, the cost will be, uh, expended and something like this will be very high. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, my, my second question about the generation for, as you mentioned, small modular reactors. Uh, is there any of these reactors is into the commissioning phase or is there any plan for the, some countries will build these reactors? Yeah, but already building. I told that the, the uh, floating reactor 
uh, academic Lavanos of working in Chukotka in Russia already several years uh, put in operation consists of uh, two units uh, called the 40 uh, 70 megawatt electrical plus uh, uh, going on the, the heat for the heat in the uh, the most northern town in the world uh, the Tivek, Tivek. it's working there and also Russia is planning to put that another rhythm 200 but here 200 this is thermal power that will be one third of 60 70 also megawatt electrical that efficiency uh, and uh, constructing uh, in uh, uh, planning to construct but there is already a site and started construction in Chukotka also and in Yakutia for the mining of gold and mining that uh, uh, different the uh, rare materials and uh, other as uh, minerals that's uh, constructed uh, constructed um, one high temperature gas reactors uh, in uh, china on uh, uh, that's just a week ago put in commercial operation uh, this is a 200 uh, megawatt electrical uh, yeah, this is a tur turbine and uh, yeah, the electricity production but there are two units 250 250 and their efficiency a little bit more than in cycle car and in engine that 40 percent efficiency because the temperature is high on the gas high temperature gas reactors they reach 700 more than 700 gas that's why that the efficiency is a little bit high also in operation and uh, working uh, south korea working uh, to create in the small reactors small modular reactors they have a, a good good design by the way that uh, and uh, smart and uh, also just USA work in uh, many countries uh, working but uh, uh, really completed only what I what I mentioned and Argentina they working on Karem 25 they call it but already they recalculated and it will be 32 megawatt electrical uh, Karem but there also there is there is problem with finances and nobody knows what will be the, with the new uh, president Millet that he may may stop this because of the, the budget money that uh, uh, they're afraid that, uh, uh, a little bit about the, at this but this they are in a good 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 um, stage of uh, construction I visited it months ago just less than months ago and we will see what's uh, how it will be developed at then so just uh, for uh, uh, I deeply believe that for the construction of nuclear power plant should be governmental willing and decision that that uh, if you have a will you find a way you should understand that this is for stability of price of electricity and the sustainability uh, for the uh, reliability of your country for dozen and dozen years that's why you need to believe it and to uh, push as an organization to do it and of course the cold involvement it should be support of the people you never get 100 percent support but if you have that 40 50 percent it's enough it's enough that the others know what to answer uh, this already the most uh, most people will be supporting so just uh, most important if you have the will you find a way to find uh, also how to const how to start and I wish you a good a good willingness in this question uh, for the clean air I continue to support the clean air and uh, the for development of the nuclear power and uh, not interruptible power that uh, we see that for the staying in the hotel already two or three times was uh, so blackout then of course uh, diesel generator starts working increasing carbon dioxide at the and working under my windows uh, 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 up to the whole night it's uh, it's not good actually when you get, get the nuclear power it's stopped thank you okay so my my last question sorry my last question about the uh, waste management yeah as you mentioned this is the weakest point in the nuclear power so uh, you mentioned in your presentation that uh, one of the solutions is reprocessing but as you as you know the reprocessing is very restricted for some country my question is uh, is there any international strategy by iea for this kind of the 
management waste of the nuclear power plant. That's it. Thank you. You know that, uh, uh, thank you for the question, the international agency, uh, they uh, uh, just recommend and they cannot strictly uh, to dictate what to do. Even all uh, safety requirements that we have, they're just recommendations. But we are happy that all member states use it in their national regulatory body. And even uh, usually national regulatory body more strict than the recommendations of International Atomic Energy Agency. The same that uh, we are just um, collecting the best practices and share with other member states. And uh, if it's not the level of working with uh, waste management, not in contradictory with existing the, uh, and approved safety uh, recommendations, we are uh, not against it. That, that, uh, uh, all recommendations of IA is recommend, recommend, just recommend, not obligatory. That's uh, uh, there is uh, there is a way, there is a proposals, but this is suggestion as one of the way. But country to decide. Maybe you uh, uh, find the better way. Even one country, uh, as I mentioned, that just for deep geological disposal. As they continue to hold it in the uh, spent fuel pool and the on the site of uh, nuclear power, then put it in the dry cask, dry care, dry 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 storage, and uh, uh, some countries reprocessing, but not so many processing. Reprocessing, a big reprocessing is the uh, UK, Russia, uh, uh, a little bit. Uh, Japan, India, uh, that's, that's almost all that, uh, China. And uh, uh, that, that also there is a different packages of uh, supply new reactors uh, for the vendors. Russia suggested that, that uh, for some countries that they get back, get back the fuel that, that they uh, brought. If you buy and their fuel, they get back fuel and uh, use it for a processing because it's not waste as i mentioned you can get from the plutonium uh, and you can get from their uranium 238 not beyond this is uh, uh, also a source and a resource for the construction of uh, new fuel um thank you so much for your lecture all protocols observed um, my question i'll follow up on the question he's asked on waste management so that we just pick it up from on the topic of waste management and with this regard, the issue of Japan post Fukushima incident and in reference to Japan's waste management strategy, what is your opinion on the possible impact of the activities on the Indo-Pacific economic maritime zones and how can the countries within that region participate substantively in the relevant process to advance and protect their interests? You, you know that, that this is a... Uh, very political questions we are not in law but i say that uh, if you are afraid of discharging water that, that's uh, water is uh, uh, already treated and they are just uh, tritium left tritium as there is on all nuclear power plant and there is a man as it and all i will tell that all uh, the, the the worst what it was uh, uh, flashed down uh, from fukushima it was done in the first several weeks and several days, and already somewhere there uh, goes. That's uh, incomparable with uh, uh, what they're discharging now. That, and uh, they discharge almost that uh, clean water that are under control and uh, diluted. That they are just uh, only some tritium. The tritium produced, it's true, uh, all nuclear power plants. But we have a limited lake. For example, at Kalina, Kalina NPP, and we discharge also just uh, uh, that uh, reprocessed water in the, the lake to clean. But there, there is tritium. And I don't remember that for the 50 years of operation nuclear power plant, somebody has a problem, somebody was found the tritium, somebody passed away. Nothing happened. We have a, a much more uh, deconstructive. Uh, elements around us uh, then to, to, to think that these things will kill me. It depends on uh, your uh, pro-attitude, how you... 
Now, can you kindly share other cheat sheet success factors to consider as a country to ensure the success of the project on civil application of nuclear technology to advance our sustainable development goals and the global agenda? And you've already mentioned the government will and buy in decision for stability and reliability and the support of their people. But what other factors are necessary to even convince these persons or these entities, the stakeholders therein on the need for it? Yet, uh, invite us. We have that a lot of that uh, special that uh, education courses, uh, workshops, seminars uh, based on the, the good practices on the stakeholder involvement from the countries uh, who has uh, support more than 50%. This is usually the countries when they really operate more than 50% electricity on the nuclear. This is uh, Hungary, this is uh, Finland, this is uh, France, uh, that uh, great support. In, uh, Slovakia and many countries, uh, great, great support. In some countries, uh, they, you know, that once I was flying in Atlanta when I was director of one of Moscow Center, and uh, uh, in a uh, uh, plane was a, a lady, elderly lady from USA, you know, like, like this US, uh, they uh, always see the foreigner and tell them, where are you from, where are you working? And I told her that I'm a nuclear engineer, and, that, and she said, how we are happy that we don't have nuclear power. And they have 20% production on nuclear power. So she is uh, maybe, I don't know, doctor of uh, stomatologist. She does not know and want to know what the, the, how produce the energy in their country. This is main, uh, 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 at least in the uh, past, it was one of the ways that people does not know and. Uh, and I told you, you have 20% on nuclear power, more than 100 units, biggest in the world. Look at me, this is crazy, crazy Russian, but then stop to, talking to me, not believe. Okay. But yeah. I'm not supporting this way. Yeah, People yeah. should know. But <laughs> she does not know, does not want to know, and she's happy. Two more last ones. In the wake of advancements in nuclear technology, their pathways and their applications, which is actually outrunning policymakers, what advice could you give to the country as it establishes its frameworks and implementing obligations to international uh, binding obligations? I, I don't get the, what. As we can see, there is technology that is being applied in the nuclear field, civil yeah. application. There are increased pathways to that effect. And these things are happening at places that are outrunning the policy makers yeah. within government yeah, so yeah, that yeah. they can best yeah, yeah. So discuss yes. discuss so, this question. We will work yeah. on this and uh, think how to involve them and uh, uh, to listen and on to open and to close at least at our educational uh, seminars, workshops uh, for the top level management uh, for the industry. Uh, if the country invite us to do it, it's already invited actually. And uh, we uh, will be doing it and uh, helping. But uh, of course, uh, that, that necessary operate by facts. And as me here, not to hide that, uh, what happened on the accident. But you can, on any areas, go much more accident with uh, thousands, thousands, and dozens, thousands killed people. And the consequences, negative consequences. And uh, you will see that the nuclear power is one of the safest. Uh, and from industrial and from other and uh, reliable source of energy. But most important, as I tried to explain, that uh, you don't have other choices. If you are talking about uh, carbon free and replacing that 70% uh, carbon sources of energy and uh, uh, stop the climate change and uh, stop the carbon dioxide emission. By the way, that also, this is uh, carbon capture and storage. It's also that uh, not developed. Uh, and they tell that we put this carbon capture and storage filters. And uh, 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 even with them, they are just not developed. Now, just several percent, 3%, I think, even less that use it in uh, carbon. Uh, then that uh, you need to increase a lot of production that uh, that will come on the cost of kilowatt hours of uh, carbon production on the, the carbon uh, station. That, uh, of course, uh, decrease, decrease uh, the lifetime and uh, uh, increase the cost, uh, uh, decrease 
uh, efficiency. Why? Put some filters in your, who have uh, uh, their own home and uh, some uh, fireplace, put their something in pipe and you'll see what's happened. That the, the process of burning it will be absolutely different and the time of life will be absolutely different, decreased, efficiency decreased. So it means the cost uh, kilowatt hours also increase and that they are not ready and that they tell them where to keep it, how to storage. And they listen in that, uh, that uh, they need to create a special fleet, big fleet that uh, uh, collect all this uh, carbon uh, uh, captures, then liquefy this CO2 and then bring it, uh, pumping up it uh, onto these uh, ships bring in some territory, nobody knows where this territory. This is uh, even not spent fuel you. To bring in territory and pumping down under the ground and hold this liquid CO2 there, collect it there. It's a, it's a crazy project, it's never be implemented. And moreover, even with this carbon capture and storage, it's a dozen times, even the hundred times more, uh, carbon dioxide emissions and from the green sources of energy and uh, including nuclear. Um, last two. Um, with regard to the issue of uh, diversion of tangible and intangible technology, and I refer to the institution here, and uh, in reference to the cases on regional conflicts that you mentioned, and further reference to the confirmation on the 10 drums of approximately 2.5 tons of uranium, uh, or concentrate that were missing from the declared site in Libya. How can Kenya assist to strengthen the global verification and attribution mechanisms on safety, security, and safeguards so that we can deter proliferation that escalates the regional conflict? It's uh, a very difficult question that not me, that uh, nobody in the United Nations don't know how to, to stop that. We are stopping, we are controlling, we are reporting, and uh, we is now that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of seismic station, a lot of that if you release somewhere underground, that anyway, it's uh, once time appear in the air, you can see it from the other, other uh, countries uh, taking the, uh, even if they are not participated in uh, proliferation like uh, North Korea. Uh, control from IEA is, uh, is uh, uh, very accurate and uh, it will be immediately found and, and uh, we can uh, uh, estimate and assess amount uh, even in Israel, in Pakistan, in India, in uh, they, uh, all of them uh, not participated in uh, this uh, 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 that uh, international uh, legislation law uh, pro uh, against proliferation and uh, uh, on the North Korea. But uh, that the expert can uh, can assess and can uh, tell the more or less right uh, numbers uh, using the different different sources of energy, uh, or sources of information. That you know that we call it that mosaic, even that uh, open and even the uh, some kind of spy information that, that uh, earthquake that if you have an underground explosion that. Uh, Earthquake will be specific, and uh, there is a lot of station who is, uh, including in Africa also, uh, that whole world that can be controlled, and they immediately see that it was the underground explosion, of, uh, and not the, not not earthquake, not tsunami, that, and uh, also taking the uh, release of uh, 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 of uh, radioactivity and the release of uh, iodine and uh, other other. Uh, materials uh, from the split in uranium. That, that's uh, what to do then. What to do then? What we are talking if we have uh, 50 war in the world, who is uh, following uh, obligation of uh, United Nations? I, I don't want to, to to mention countries, but you see what's happened. That's uh, needs something to do, and this is not a question to me. We, if I'll be the uh, General Secretary of United Nations, I will ask you to help me how to solve this problem. Now, I don't <laughs> know. So finally, in regard to the changes in the global order and due to the geopolitical shifts that are existing, 
and that, that has led to the impeding of adoption of resolutions at the NPT convention. How can Kenya and the regional countries promote seamless adoption and implementation of those obligations, and particularly with reference to the diplomatic connotations, because that's where the challenge exists. You know, I'm, I'm just a nuclear engineer and not the policy. I even don't understand what you ask. This you probably, you should ask the politics, maybe our chairman to ask about it, that uh, I'm uh, too stupid for, to answer this question that uh, i'm a director of nuclear power plant that's uh, we need to ask our dg if i answer not correctly probably the dg won't be happy with me i understand that's uh, why the most uh, i think that the, the kenya itself should follow that uh, uh, international recommendation and legislation and join to all convention that that's this is a, if every country do it uh, voluntarily that uh, probably you will find find uh, some of the ways some of the, how to avoid this proliferation. But uh, from my point of view, it should be good relationship between the country itself and not create the problems when supported one country and uh, humiliated another country. In this case, nobody will be creating atomic power against another country. OK, good people. If we could ask maybe a question each, so that we get a sample. Uh, I think we can do maybe four or five. My name is Emmanuel Dutori. I'm an analytical chemist and a medical physicist at uh, Technical University of Kenya. I have two question, questions. One is about the use of the word nuclear from the name IAEA, International Atomics. You didn't use the word nuclear. Nuclear is associated with bombs. So at the moment... For me, not associated with no, The general public perception about nuclear. Is it possible for IAEA to adopt the word atom in place of nuclear for the purpose of public uh, education, number one? It, it depends on the languages. In, in Russia, we never use nuclear. We use atom, exactly. Thanks. Mirna atom. But also for the bomb, we use atom. <laughs> Atomic bomb. The second question is about uh, uh, the nuclear power and nuclear energy application. Mostly is for generation of electricity. Uh, we have got other good applications of nuclear energy. How does IAEA help, uh, for instance, Kenya? to advance uh, in application, diverse applications, specifically in medical areas, as well as in, uh, in nuclear chemistry. With, uh, like currently in Kenya, we have got, and East Africa, very few uh, universities teach nuclear chemistry and radiochemistry. How does IAA promote the, uh, production or uh, professions, professionals from nuclear chemistry and radiochemistry? Yes, yeah, thank you very thank much. You. This is not my question, actually, because I am uh, responsible for the nuclear energy department. That's why I talked about it. But we, of course, we have nuclear application. There's a lot of uh, work in these radioisotopes, and we work technical cooperation. And uh, uh, all the program for the technical cooperation implemented by government, on request of the government, and of course all countries, I met it, they complained that it's not enough, we don't have this, 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 this area not covered on the uh, medicine, that uh, on equipment, not enough. Uh, please formulate this through the, your government and apply to the next biennial of the technical cooperation uh, application and uh, what is most important, decided the government and uh, I hear doing on the request, not just the, some clinic that they complain they don't have enough uh, equipment uh, uh, for the uh, on oncology, uh, coping with oncology, uh, but uh, uh, formulated inside of the government and apply. I'm pretty, pretty sure that uh, your government uh, formulated a, a good request through the technical cooperation. Uh, we have that several, uh, many, I just cannot 
uh, don't remember because it's not my area. We have the technical cooperation department and we have the department of nuclear application with, of course, new initiative of DG related to cancer, race of hope that uh, increasing with the, the uh, atoms for food. It's also not mine that uh, how to conserve and save the products in uh, many countries and uh, not to throw on this short day, but uh, you know that uh, using the application, you could use it half a year, hold it half a year, that the packet uh, and the go through the uh, nuclear application and the radiation of gamma, that then you kill all the microbes there, that and uh, just uh, you can bring the, the good fruits from the, uh, your country to the market. But this will probably raise another market questions of the cost of uh, everything market water. Do they need this or not need? But the, the reason we are working in the atoms for food, atoms uh, race of hope, uh, what, what else they have that for plastic. That's I, I don't understand this plastic won't be criticizing that today you need collect of uh, all plastic and then uh, to go it through the uh, nuclear application and the, it brings that uh, you will uh, destroy these uh, uh, materials and it already will be reprocessed uh, in, uh, in, in the ground. But uh, for me, it's uh, most uh, difficult to exactly to collect all this plastic, then, then to, to go through the. But this is the uh, all ideas going and all programs, big programs going through the nuclear application, uh, which. Uh, my dear colleague uh, Najat Mukhtar from Morocco is a leading. And uh, I, I'm not going to go there in detail because it's not my area of activities. And technical cooperation, Yuhua, Chinese um, uh, former head of regulatory body, he's working on the technical cooperation on implementation, NA, a nuclear application department, and our department programs and he participated uh, uh, for the creation infrastructure actually they use our programs na and ne and nuclear safety and our people are an expert but doing it through the instrument of financing of technical cooperation that's what we are also doing when we involved in infrastructure not technical but don't think that technical cooperation helping us create infrastructure nuclear energy department not it's not true because they're in the team, all our people. This is also the way of finance. That's why when uh, we see that Abdurazak and he is telling that all making uh, technical cooperation, it's not exactly true. And even Andre was telling, he not mentioned us and told that, that technical cooperation all doing, all doing we are, but using that their way of finance. Your mic, is it on? Take this. And I have this. Good evening. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Chuka, and I'm one of the students of the PJEC program. And thank you for your presentation, sir. I know that we are pushing for nuclear energy because it's clean and we are trying to fight against uh, climate change. Pushing is not correct, we are, you are willing. Yeah, <laughs> we are willing to, to go for, you? yes, we are willing to go for uh, nuclear energy. But then we know that in parts of, or in other countries who have like high carbon stock, they might also have uranium. And if everyone decides to go for uh, nuclear energy, mining for uranium will increase and we know that mining has like a uh, environmental impact that go against climate change so how can we balance that because more nuclear energy more mining and then we have more like yeah. environmental impact so, so you're afraid that it would be not enough uh, fuel, fuel uh, for the future that uh, uh, first of all that uh, you know that um, agency created the so-called LAU Bank in Kazakhstan. This is a 
uh, that uh, uh, not not fuel because the fuel can be different, different assemblies uh, for the different type of reactors. But, but there, enriched low enriched uh, uranium uh, hexafluoride, hexafluoride uranium, uh, holding uh, enough to prepare that uh, fuel for one loading. That uh, was done uh, several years ago in, uh, under uh, uh, control and operation of uh, International Atomic Energy. This is the uh, uh, IAEA Bank of uh, Guarantee. Exactly when the people tell them that if uh, when the stop supply and maybe the fuel, we, sell, we are telling we have the fuel, we will supply you on the uh, average market price on those moments. Then that uh, uh, assessment of the, the fuel in uh, the world or, or of the uranium is uh, enough. Of course, if uh, immediately a lot of countries start construction, you will have some delay. You are absolutely right that uh, it needs time to start uh, that uh, a new extraction, excavation, and uh, milling and uh, uh, in the low enrichment uh, for the fuel. But uh, totally, it's enough. And unfortunately, you can, you cannot do it in advance because. Uh, uh, if you are not uh, constructed 20 units per year, where you get this uh, already extracted uh, uranium? Who will be doing it? It's uh, not profitable. That's why uh, it's not not only the one obstacle. If immediately many countries start construction, you will get not only uranium uh, delay, you have delay with even industry, with the heavy equipment uh, production of reactor vessel, of uh, steam generators and uh, so so on that that's uh, uh, may create obstacles but it's all uh, can be solved that it's not that the very uh, dangerous obstacles that can stop uh, further development and uh, this is uh, of course uh, next step uh, if you start construction then the company start increase amount of the fuel or the uranium and uh, preparation of fuel assemblies and uh, preparing of the heavy equipment for the nuclear industry. Okay, uh, DDG, we also have an online audience. And if we could just scroll up, maybe we could uh, see a couple of questions or comments there. Um, Colin Zomondi is saying, Africa is 54 countries with close to 1.3 billion people. Being a UN agency, what kind of policy and programs do IA execute at continental level? Um, we also have Tesfaye, who is, uh, I'm grateful for the excellent presentation. It is informative and presented by a passionate presenter. Um, he's calling you Mr. Nuclear. And he's saying he's from Addis Ababa. And the question is uh, that the fear for nuclear has a strong presence despite decades of efforts and tons of data. Why is this so? Um, so that's Tesfaye from Addis. So we have two questions basically asking um, uh, the coordination uh, IEA does with the African countries and African Union. And then uh, Tesfaye is asking about why does the fear persist uh, despite all this time? And then um, the last one there, Fabiano. Fabiano is saying, great presentation. How can small upcoming countries speed up process of embarking on SMR, yet the technologies are not fully tested? I think we can answer those. Yeah, uh, this is a lot of questions on different. That, uh, the fear that uh, I already told that uh, you need to uh, operate by facts and compare with uh, other sources of energy. That uh, you need energy, yes. Population growing, yes. Uh, you would like. Uh, a lot of countries, a lot of countries in Africa would like to to live in 2050 as you are living now. That uh, on uh, because on the capital the same amount, no. And uh, in this case, that you need the energy. What energy? What's uh, solution? That uh, we uh, during my lecture I uh, uh, analyzed different sources of energy, and we can see if we are talking about the carbon free, that uh, it uh, can be only nuclear. Nuclear, I like nuclear because one fuel assembly for VVR 1000, and we have 163 in VVR 1000 reactor uh, fuel assemblies. One fuel assembly have uh, energy like 600 railroad trucks of coal. Would you like to get this uh, always this uh, uh, 
uh, several trains or dozen trains of coal and burn it in your country and make it absolutely dirty. This is your choice. And uh, nuclear is a clean source of energy. So we need to, to talk, to explain. As I said, that the people who understand and who is living uh, near the nuclear power, they never against nuclear power, never. Moreover, that new and new generation educated and go and continue to work under the nuclear power. You know, on the same that the children and grandchildren even already. That's, uh, we need to bring the facts to educate people and educate it from the very beginning, better from kindergarten and from the school. What you uh, get in the school, if you had the right information, you cannot then uh, already that um, very difficult to, 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 to change this information in your mind, in your mind. I told already, maybe it's not a good example here, that uh, I met uh, in the 90s uh, 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 when we started uh, going in uh, uh, nuclear power plants in Germany and uh, met uh, some uh, person who was accompanying us uh, uh, as a coordinator from Siemens company uh, on nuclear energy. He was uh, 70 with something years old already, he worked like consultant. And uh, he uh, was uh, on the Second World War in the uh, Russian territory, was in a uh, Russian prison, uh, pris uh, prisoner of the war, was sitting five years or seven years uh, on construction, reconstruction of uh, the rebuilding of the country. That's why he knew Russian language. But when uh, you talk tete a tete without the other people, and uh, in uh, after some dinner and small drink, he will uh, can uh, easily tell you that the best leader in the world was Adolf Hitler. Nothing could change his education from 1930, 10 years till 1940. Nothing, not collapse of Germany. That's why important to talk about the pluses of nuclear energy from kindergarten, from the first stage, bring it into school. And then you have the generation, young generation in 10 years, they all will be supporting nuclear power. That's the one of the, what else was the question? I don't, I don't forget about, about the fear, about the, yeah, there was the programs, 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 atoms yes. for, atoms uh, for net zero. They just suggested in Egypt, uh, the program, uh, not only for uh, Africa, for many developing countries, uh, 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 even not for the, yeah, for developed also some atoms for net zero. That uh, that what it means. That uh, as I mentioned a little bit, we have the special software, special tools, special programs that we can, on request of the country, uh, calculate uh, what the shares should be on different source of energy by 2050 if they would like to uh, uh, get their national determined contributions or uh, come to the zero by 2050. And we can tell them about the share on nuclear power, uh, scientifically justified and calculated using special tools. We have the several tools for this. And some country asking us of this because it's like the first step exactly, the first step for them to produce like the report of international organization showing by, that by 2050 international organization calculated 15% in our country should be on uh, uh, nuclear energy if you would like to get zero uh, GNG emission. This is uh, also a good country, a good program, and was suggested by DG on the last COP27 in Egypt, Sharm el -Sheikh. And there, is, there are other countries, but uh, uh, that's exactly what uh, they join in Africa. Not only Africa, joining the other countries like race, uh, uh, a race of hope, yeah, and uh, as I already mentioned, that uh, uh, atoms for food that uh, related to nuclear application, and uh, we also just uh, our SMR platform that uh, we can uh, answer in that uh, under the request of the country and uh, also to to work the applicability of SMR there. That SMR you cannot call SMR not developed technology. SMR in Russia working more than 70 years. 
they were all on the submarines either on ice break of lead they have many hours and other sources of uh, nuclear atomic energy so that uh, all these reactors they are not new they are just new for civil application and uh, of course it uh, takes uh, some uh, a new design, no, not design the reactor, design that, uh, for example, you don't need containment for the, some uh, 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 icebreakers, you need confinement, so-called, but, but if you bring it on the ground, you need to already containment, and you need to create the additional safety system, because uh, the, not, not, not the water from uh, the site, but uh, there is a surrounding environmental, and you need to uh, create uh, uh, that what necessary and uh, necessary infrastructure for this reactor. But the reactors itself is uh, uh, very reliable and they are working for many, many years. What else was the question that I forgot? I, th I think you've uh, basically answered those um, because the other one was about how the agency works with the African Union as an organization, which I think you've partly answered. Um, talk about Egypt, about the net zero, how the coordination is to be done. Um, ladies and gentlemen, sadly we are out of time. Um, I don't know whether you, any of you noticed time has moved and we're heading towards six o'clock. Uh, the DDG still has a tight schedule for the rest of the evening and he flies out tonight. Otherwise, we'd have kept him here till uh, eight o'clock. No, at eight we need to go to airport. <laughs> so we'd have kept him here till eight o'clock or later because it's a very interesting topic and we can never exhaust this in, in one sitting um i know i know many, many still have itching questions um a lot of debate and interactions but it's good and i think interactions are good uh all, all your questions were very valid and um did you, if, did you, if you want to say something in yeah, closing? Yeah, maybe. yeah I uh, hear that because of limit of time, not mentioned that uh, we have that uh, also that uh, gender equality uh, program says Marie Skodowska Curie Fellowship Program. This is also one of the way of stakeholders uh, when uh, the people ordinarily see that a lot of women working in nuclear industry, they're not so scared and not so afraid of nuclear energy. That's, uh, uh, we help in, uh, master degree and uh, already uh, goes through our system that uh, and it's still continue education more than 500 uh, young ladies uh, from uh, almost 100 countries and uh, uh, also uh, graduating in uh, 100 countries uh, getting master degree on the area of uh, nuclear energy uh, science and technologies at uh, nuclear legislation and so and uh, by the way nine of them if I uh, remember good from uh, from uh, okay maybe somebody studying in your university I don't I don't know necessary to check sorry sorry for this that I didn't prepare for this also just another program that uh, to hold the ladies uh, woman who is working on already in nuclear industry nuclear power plant and science and technology related to nuclear because uh, statistics showed that uh, then uh, less uh, left only 30 percent as living but on uh, different uh, different uh, conditions and uh, uh, that uh, we are creating that uh, uh, Lisa Meitner program that when we create a group 10 15 20 uh, these uh, women and uh, on of course a specific topic because the nuclear area is very big and bring them to see that uh, a nuclear industry, a nuclear power plant, and uh, educate, get the seminar workshop in different countries. And we already conducted in the USA to this program. And uh, I remember that in one cohort was the one uh, lady from Kenya. Yeah. But uh, I would like to thank all of you for listening to me, and uh, thanks for inviting me and uh, thanks all the professors, uh, honorable, and uh, all uh, the chairman, and uh, all of the uh, Bassett, all of the members of UPR who is trying to, as you said, push push you to create nuclear power. You should say that I would like to have nuclear power. 
after my lectures. So just uh, and I wish you that uh, uh, good uh, development of your, uh, especially not only nuclear, but in all areas. I uh, wish you health and uh, uh, happy and merry Christmas and happiness to your children, to your grandchildren who has it, uh, and uh, to your love and, and uh, to your members of your family. And uh, uh, also, that's very important to create and a reliable and sustainable a future is reliable and sustainable energy and uh, I believe it will be nuclear energy. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, TDG. Before you sit, I'll just ask all of us to stand, everyone to stand. And um, I want us to acknowledge him. Uh, he's come all the way from Vienna with nuggets, um, which if Kenya and other African countries can harness would benefit uh, developments in uh, great ways. So um, they, they, they are those guys called the Vikings, um, you know, in Iceland and other parts of the world. And uh, so I want you to stretch your hands. Up and oh. Akuna oh. Matata. Karibu Kenya tena. And now I thank you. You could now clap for him. And uh, please be seated. Please be seated. Uh, we are now coming right to the end. And uh, you know we have our hosts here. And uh, so I'll give it back to our hosts. And I call upon Dr. Rafael Nyenge um, to come and give uh, the vote of thanks. And um, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Mass of Ceremonies. I think uh, most of my work has been done by him, the way you stretched, thanking him. Uh, our guest speaker, Mikhail Judakov. I think uh, we appreciate the time you have spent with us. We started preparing for you on um, uh, Monday evening and we have made it through the efforts of quite a number of people. And you have seen the interest the lecture has created in the audience. Actually, if we had time, we would have stayed here until eight to answer all the questions. So next time you come to Kenya, don't come in the evening. You, may, may <laughs> you, you need a whole week here in Kenya. And uh, we also appreciate, we know how busy you are um, being in charge of an international organization. And uh, I really am uh, energized when I think of a person who started as a plant operator. Here in Kenya, we would say who started as an asola and now he's in charge of uh, uh, international organization we really appreciate the time you have spent with us you have also seen the energy we have i did not expect this kind of uh, enthusiasm from the audience i think we were just cutting them they would have asked many many more questions and just to summarize um, nuclear energy to start it is very expensive, but to run it over a long time is very cheap. It's like buying a brand new car. It may cost you a lot. If you compare it with the, the kind of cars we buy in Kenya, uh, these uh, and down cars, which look cheap, but they are very expensive at the end. So that's how I look at nuclear energy. And uh, KU, we are in the front line promoting nuclear energy education. You can be sure that you have disciples here in KU. So when you go back to Geneva, you tell them about Kenya and how very soon we'll be catching up with Russia and the rest of them in harnessing uh, this uh, free energy if we know how to handle it. We also want to appreciate uh, the Nupean group.
which is led by the chairman of the board. We want to appreciate other organizations which um, made this um, visit uh, possible, like uh, Kendra, like Nakosti, all those who made this uh, possible. Now we want also to appreciate our students, the PGEC students. I think you have heard it from the horse's mouth about nuclear energy. And I would ask you just stand and wave at him a bye-bye as he goes back. Please just stand. It's, it's good. The PGEC students, you can see quite a group. You can wave at him, he'll appreciate. Okay. Thank you, sir. You can sit. Thank you. I think we also have students from the Department of Physics. If you can stand, please. Students from the Department of Physics. Uh -huh. You wave at our guest speaker. Thank you so much. Uh, now we, we have um, uh, the KU support staff, the guys who made this to be possible. We sometimes forget them, but they are crucial. The ICT guys, uh, the teaching program guys, the website guys, the PR guys, and of course, behind the scenes, I know there are security people around us to make sure you are safe because you are such an asset to this world. And of course, our online participants, we cannot forget them. And I think they were even more than we are. Dr. Ashim, how many they were? And the physical attendants? Okay, I think uh, the number almost balances. They may be more than us. I cannot forget the university management led by our vice chancellor, represented here by our DVC, Toruo, assisted by a very close friend of us, DVC academic. We appreciate if you can, I always get amazed if you can sit here that long time when we know you have so many responsibilities. You are coming from one meeting to another one and maybe you are going to another one. And my friend and the Dean, the Secretary Dean Spass, we appreciate. So the university management, when you go back to the VC, uh, we really appreciate having been given this chance to have this kind of a lecture. And the physics, we cannot forget to thank ourselves, surely, for <laughs> because we may forget to appreciate ourselves when uh, we work behind the scenes to make this a success. So thank you so much. When you go back, may you have a safe journey going to Geneva. May you have success in your other engagements. So we will, I think we have learned something new. There is a club called Nuclear Club. I don't know, he said nuclear. We are used to the factorio, but there's a nuclear. I will just ask we all clap once as hard as you can so that it can produce a noise like that of a nuclear explosion. <laughs> okay, once. Good, thank you. Gentlemen, we call it a day. Okay, I'm told um, the last, last thing we'll do is a photo session. So, uh, Hashim, maybe you can, would you like, no, Hashim prefers we do it in here. So, so uh, DDG chairman and uh, uh, VC, DVCs. Is it, is it better they stand? I think stand stand would be better. Yeah, Dean as well. What do you want him to say? Nuclear atoms. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. 
somebody was saying that uh, we should stop talking of nuclear and talk of atomic. Uh, Hiroshima Nagasaki was called what? Atomic. <laughs> Okay, now, um, okay, so we what we'll do we'll we'll invite the rest um, to join. Everyone now can come and join. I think the rest of you will stand on the platform. And then, uh, Altrin, you, you can't go to the platform. You probably need to be down. Give us a cue. 